All right, so welcome everyone. This is the day 18 of 30 days sock challenge. And in this sock challenge, we are going to, to in today's sock challenge, we are going to learn about SSH log analysis. SSH is very, very important protocol. Uh, we'll take a sample log file and we will analyze that log file, okay? So it's gonna be really interesting. You will learn about different keywords, Splunk queries, how to upload the data and just the data as well. Um, it's in the JSON format. That means you don't have to parse the data manually yourself. Okay. Now, before you go ahead, we, we go ahead, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't registered to this 30 day sock challenge, you can find the link in the description below from there. You can register for the challenge and, um, uh, make sure once you register, you will get an email for your confirmation confirm and then you will it will take you to the discord server this is where you can share the you can submit your lab tasks okay you can also find lot lot of lot like-minded people where with whom you can discuss and resolve your queries okay uh, i also want to tell you about our upcoming sock analysis bootcamp i'll quickly talk about the sock analysis bootcamp which is uh for level one and this is where you can see who is this for uh, master the program objective the tools that are covered these are all enterprise tools that we will be talking about this is the syllabus and in, uh, including introduction to cyber security network and security everything from foundation from basics and then every module cover different uh, hands-on lab exercise as well there will be a personal guidance and remember there is an also we also provide you an opportunity for an internship okay so if you want it want an internship we provide a virtual internship for in case you lack any security experience i mean maybe you you are fresher or maybe let's say you are in it domain want to switch to cyber security and want real world experience of the job will help you with the virtual internship program as well so let's go ahead and work on splunk for now and uh, right so this is our challenge day 18 splunk basics in this challenge we are going to upload a ssh log file and then we are we have to perform this task okay these are the three tasks that we have to perform and then we can take a snapshot and share across uh, on the discord server for this make sure your splunk server is ready and um, this is my splunk and on under this you have to go to the setting tab click on add data and under this i also shared you this ssh log file so you can click on this this will download the ssh file and then click on the upload once you click on upload select the file or maybe you can also drag and drop the ssh file as well like this okay once it is done, click on next. Then you can specify the source type because this is JSON. The benefit of JSON is you don't have to manually parse the individual data because log files are in a, uh, all the logs are generated in a different format. If it is in the JSON format, you don't have to parse it manually. Splunk will be able to identify the relevant fields itself, right? So it's in the JSON format. And you can also specify the host and also the index as well. You can create a new index and then map that data into it. Index is basically a data, a database. It's a kind of a database, right? So for, let's say I can create a database from Windows, Linux machine, firewall, anything. I can also have a source type. Source type is basically uh, specify you structure of a data. You know, it defines the type of data like access log, syslog, sysmon, cisco, uh, syslog. So this is what we can define under that, right? Finally, you can click on review and this will tell you what is the input type, what is the file name, source type, uh, host name, index, right? So index is default. So let's keep it as it is. Once you do that, this will take you to the search and reporting field. I'll I'll, I'll do that from here. I can go to, in your case, you have to submit it. In my case, I have already uploaded the data, so I don't have to do it again. You can go to apps. Under this, you have search and reporting option. Uh, I already use a query. So this is the query you will get by default once you submit the data. 
where you can see you have a source, which is your file name, of course. Uh, and then we have host name and source type is JSON. I click on search button. Okay. And immediately I'll get all the data. Okay. So you can see around 1200 events I have. Then I have host source type and source source and source type these are all by default i mean default fields from the logs okay and these are all interesting fields which are captured which are extracted by this splunk by default this is all possible because we are using json uh, log file i created i actually generated those files myself so i made sure it is in the json format i actually converted the log file into the json okay so in this, I'll show you something very interesting. I hope you know about SSH. In SSH, we have source destination and SSH works by a client sending the request initially. It's basically secure access, right? So you make secure shell basically. So you make sure you, you can access any Linux servers or any machine securely. It, uh, it, it was a solution over Telnet because Telnet was using a plain text with SSH, it's more secure because it's encrypted message. So this is where the public key is used. So whenever the client want to talk to a server, server talk, talk on a port 22, you initiate the request to the server and then server will be sending you the public key. Based on that, you authenticate the server and there is a negotiation happen on different parameter. Once that secure channel is established, then only you can start sending the list of commands and interact with the, any of the servers, okay? Now, um, so one thing is clear, the server will always be talking on port 22. The host will be on a random port. You can see we have ID originator host. Okay. Uh, that means that would be the host. Uh, H means host, right? These are the host IP address. Then you have originator port. These are all the port. These are all random ports. So most likely, of course, this is the endpoint itself. Just by looking at it, you will get the idea. Now you also have responder host. Just by looking at it, you can get the idea. I mean, this, because this is a responder, so it's most likely the server. And you can also validate by responder underscore P that represent the port number. And that is actually SSH port number, default port number. In the SSH log, because this is from Zeek IDS, so you also have different kind of messages in, uh, in SSH. There are different logs like successful, failed attempt, multiple failed attempt, and many more. So you can see... Uh, uh, there has to be a yeah, event type so in the event type we have successful ssh login when the login was successful that's obvious then we have failed ssh login multiple failed authentication attempt and connection without authentication all right we also have auth attempts so number of times a machine tried um, you know uh, attempt to access the machine but it may have got failed for some reason then we have authentication success. So these are the different parameter. False means it was not successful. True means it was successful. Okay. So let's, uh, uh, once we understand all the fields, let's work on our task. First task is to list out 10 endpoints with failed SSH login attempt. Okay. So we already have, the, uh, I mean, for failed login attempt, we can use the, success by auth success right so for fail we'll select false parameter you can click on it it will automatically be fetched will be applied onto the search query so uh, i can also type manually by saying maybe auth success equals to false i can do that manually but you can also select that in the search from here okay so once that is done, uh, this will show me all the failed attempt, all the failed attempt, right? All the unsuccessful uh, access attempt, right? So I want to see list of 10 endpoints with the failed endpoints. So failed access, right? So I got all the failed uh, login attempt. Now let's try to get the list of all the host IP address. For this, we are going to use a pipe. I mean, of course, we'll be using a pipe. To, uh, to filter out later and uh, we are going to get the count of all the originator host I mean all the machine IP address so we'll use the stats count by 
the host machine, right? So we can do it for anything. I mean, count is just a function. Stats is just a function where we can have count based on the function. It's a basically a parameter transform command, and then we can use the count as a function, right? And then we can sort and get the top 10 IP address, right? So you can see currently we may be having around 20. So we can apply a filter. We can sort by the ascending order and we just need top 10, right? So these are all 10 IP addresses and these are in the um, ascending order, right? So um, yeah, perfect. So now uh, this task one is complete. You can take a snapshot of this and share me in the Discord server. Let's talk about the task two, which is to find the total, find out the total number of SSH connection. For this, this is going to be very interesting. I'll, you can see, I can simply remove all this and enter the stats command again. So I, I have used stats count. Instead of using by, I use as. This is basically renaming the field. So I just say, give me all the events as this fields. You will see, um, I'm not sure if you noticed this, but let me remove it first. There's no field saying total SSH connection. You see this? There's no field as such with this name, right? So I created the field myself. I can, I, I, I'll be just counting these stats. You can see if you, if you do that, you just get the 1200 as a count number. But if I use as, if I have as as the keyword, this will rename the field. Instead of count, this will be total SSH connection. You see this? Perfect. Let's take a snapshot and share me across. Now, finally, I need the count of all the event types. Okay. Uh, successful, failed, no auth, multiple fails, everything. So I need to use event type as the field. You see this? I have an event type where it is. Yeah, perfect. This is the one. So to see the list of all all the event types and their count, I can use the stats count by event type. Okay, let's hit enter. Oh, perfect, sorry. Yes, can you see that these are all the event types and we also see their counts as well, right? So this completes our day 18. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, take a snapshot of all the tasks and share me in the Discord server. I'll be there to assist you. Thank you.